Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, the place where we not only talk about what's going on in the gun world, but also how we're going to fix it together. And this morning's episode, we're going to dive into what I would honestly call a hate crime. This is why we wait a little bit of time before we immediately jump to conclusions, media. Everything will be linked in the description box below, and I'm going to show you some stark, amazing contrast of why this individual chose this place, what the administration, the Biden administration, said about this exact same tactic, this is something I need you to send out because this is how we push our rights forward and we solve the problem at hand because the people are not at the wheel. Everything will be linked in the description box below and I cannot wait to hear what you guys think about this one. So I'm going to dive right into this. Of course, this is one of the worst things that happens in our society. My personal opinion, this is because we have a sickness of the heart and mind in this country, not a, a problem of an inanimate object which is protected by the Second Amendment. But we're going to dive into that because it doesn't matter what happens. We are not going to bar budge towards hardening schools and protecting those that we need protect need to protect. It's all about the agenda. We're going to keep on going no matter what happens, no matter how many terrible things happen. We're going to get those guns because the only solution is gun control. Let me show you something. Check this out. So this is from the actual police in the press conference yesterday. Check out what he said. This is so fascinating to me. It was the only school that was targeted. Uh, there was another location that was mentioned, uh, but because of a, a threat assessment by the suspect, uh, too much security, they decided not to in that area. Too much security was determined by a threat assessment. So a premeditating criminal murderous person, I'm gonna be really, really nice on this. So this individual decides to go forward and say, I'm gonna do the worst thing possible on my way out the door. Then they take a threat assessment to figure out the easiest way to approach of what they want to accomplish with the least amount of resistance possible. And they go away and change their plans because they would have met too much force at the first target. But don't worry, the people at the wheel, they got this. Check this out. Th this makes me so mad. I, I almost have no words. To, uh, when it comes to schools, and, and I don't know what he said specifically about, about schools. I know there's been a uh, conversation about hardening schools. That is not something that he believes in. Well, the he in this scenario would be President Biden. So it's something that he doesn't uh, you know, believe in. It's amazing. You can believe any of the other things that we hear come out of the administration, but you don't believe in hardening schools. Okay, well, I now have a police chief saying the reason that this person changed their behavior was because there was too much resistance or armed resistance or armed security at the first target, so they went somewhere where there wasn't. Interesting. It's almost like this is an example of a gun-free zone failing. Why would a bully, someone who does not have the capacity to do this, Okay, why would someone go out at the point of most resistance when they can choose the least resistance? That's what you're witnessing here. But don't worry, the person at the wheel says, I don't believe in hardening schools, even though we've seen consistently a time and time and time again, when schools are hardened, when soft targets are hardened, they divert away threats. This is easy. The only thing you can deduce from this is that they don't want to solve the problem with guns because they built it into their ethos that guns are the problem. You literally have a perfect case in point of this working. Now, let me show you something else because all gun control in the world, it, it works, right? You can tell this really irritates me. Let's get this. Three weapons, an AR style rifle, an AR style pistol, by the way, that's a Keltec Sub 2000, just so you guys know, and a handgun were found. And police believe Hale got a, at least two of the weapons legally. So now one of the guns was not purchased legally. Good job, gun control. Background checks. A search warrant executed at Hale's home led to the seizure of a sawed-off shotgun. A sawed-off shotgun. What do you bet that this was not a registered NFA item? What do you bet? I don't know. Over, under? Let me know in the comments field. Because the longer that we go down this path of it can't be the solution to protect those that need protecting with firearms. We're just going to let them be sitting ducks forever because we want that gun control. So can't even say that. I can't, I can't say that. So this is the point. Again, you have a police chief in a press conference saying, yeah, the person diverted their attention from one place because there was too much resistance to another that had no resistance. That's a gun control zone. Gun control. It's gun free zone. Then you have the administration a couple months ago going, we don't believe in hardening schools. You don't. Because this was a hate crime caused because you didn't believe in hardening schools. You also have Democratic senators who have openly rejected any type of bill in the last Congress around hardening schools. 
Chris Murphy is a good example. He got up and completely stymied a Ted Cruz bill last year. Don't believe me? Look it up. Everything will be linked in the description box below. I hope you guys enjoy this. Please send this out because this video should speak volumes. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next one.